OK, just a reminder. So we will record uh, the webinar. Uh, but after the presentation, we will have Q and A uh, session, which is not going to be recorded. OK. So just uh, some housekeeping. OK. Um, so just a quick introduction uh, 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 for the speaker. So today we are so glad to have uh, uh, Professor Dabo Guan as our today's speaker. So Dabo is a distinguished professor at the Tsinghua University, China, and also a chair of the climate change economics at the University College London, UK. So he's the fellow of the Academy of Social Sciences in the UK. And uh, he specialized in the uh, environmental economics for international climate change mitigation, climate change adoption, scenario analysis on environmental impact, water resources, accounting and management, input and output modeling and their applications in both developed and developing countries. So he is the chief expert in coordinating China EU flagship cooperation program on climate change and the biodiversity. So he was a lead author for the IPCC AR5, and he was the highly cited researchers for 2018 to 2022. So the top thousand climate uh, academics. So he has uh, caused over 260 plus publications Include, including 60 plus articles published in Nature uh, and the uh, Theory Journals, uh, as well as the PNS. And he also received the PNS uh, Cozzarella uh, Prize by back to 2014. And also, actually, he won the Antifa Prize for three times. And also, the Philip uh, Langholm uh, Prize. So that's the amazing background of the uh, Professor Tabo Guan. So Tabo's talk today is the development and the applications of full-scale, near real-time, multi-regional input output table for the global emerging economies. So the presentation is going to be 30 minutes, and afterward we will have about 15 to 20 minutes for questions. Okay. So Dabo, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Kui Shuang, and thank you, everyone. Um, thank you for Kui Shuang for a very comprehensive introduction. <laughs> um, today, I'm going to um, firstly introduce a little bit uh, about the um, a little bit about background on the climate change, and then going to mainly present our newly uh, developed uh, MRL model. Uh, emerging model with a special focus on global south countries and uh, the, the 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 final part we apply uh, this uh, into some real world problems as uh, as well as we have uh, developed the carbon emission account and data sets uh, for global economies also for the emerging economies as well so we also have a website called seeds c-e-a-d-s dot net uh, which you could find the emerging model, um, uh, the whole model, and then the rele relevant data, including the environment accounts uh, online, uh, freely for download for academic purposes. So let me just uh, quickly uh, start on uh, 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 some background that possibly you have all known um, this. And this is a graph from uh, IPCC AR5, uh, the 1.5 degree C special report. So what that says is in the past 20 years, the global emission has going up very quickly. And if along the current uh, uh, or the historical emission trajectories, the emissions is gonna uh, go up very quickly and will lead to the high climate risks. And it will lead to the global mean temperature rising to four to seven degrees C. And we have a Paris Agreement and uh, we are trying to make a great effort and uh, trying to limit the emissions, um, the global warming by two degrees C, uh, and uh, ideally in one and a half degrees C. Um, so uh, in the last um, of the the uh, work, uh, kind of the IP, uh, like the global summit in COP27 in Egypt, in Shanashek, 
Now, I, I was there as well. So the key, one of the key themes was about the damage and loss. And uh, so, uh, especially for the developing country itself. So the, um, uh, uh, not only a part of the, the mitigation, uh, but also the adaptation and especially how to, to, to adapt to the, the more frequent and severe climate risks is, is going to be very important in the future as well. Um, so uh, a part of um, uh, our work is trying to count emissions. We're trying to count emissions for basically under two degrees C, uh, what will be the emissions uh, total uh, space there and what is left. So uh, under the um, some certain uh, uncertainties, under the two degrees C, the, uh, the space, the carbon space for emissions is this much. And uh, unfortunately, 80% of the emission space has been uh, consumed unless we have some uh, very uh, large scale uh, geoengineering projects and we unlikely to remove most of the the, the historical emissions from the previous uh, eject, uh, uh, discharge. And the, 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 the remaining carbon space is about 800 gigatons in the future from, from now until to 100 almost. So this is the, the amount of the emissions under two degrees C's we are roughly uh, planning to. Of course, there's a uncertainty there. So there's about uh, uh, two thirds of the certain uh, certainty uh, areas is here. But let's take this as a, as a carbon space. And then we look at the uh, uh, the uh, the how we could uh, distribute and who gets the emissions uh, emission quotas. So uh, if we look at the um, the uh, the key four uh, key uh, major economies in the world, U.S., EU, China, India, uh, they are uh, over the last ten years they have been per, uh, performing quite differently in terms of emission growth. And uh, just to be clear, this is all the production emissions, it's the uh, territory emissions, it's not consumption, it's just uh, the direct uh, discharge. So um, the EU and the US basically, they gradually uh, slow down, not in a very uh, fast pace, but they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are declining. At, uh, and the China over the last 10 years, the emission has a uh, go up and down uh, sometimes. It has been stabilized, uh, at least stabilizing uh, in the last 10 years. But compared to India uh, and other developing country, India has a, uh, has a uh, growing their emissions uh, um, by five to 7% every year. So they have a really uh, fast emission growth but it's not as great as uh, other developing countries like uh, some small countries like Vietnam, Estonia, Laos, Cambodia, um, Uganda, those countries. And uh, these, those countries over the last 10 years, altogether, they actually grow double figures, uh, annual growth rate go really quickly. Um, and if you look at uh, a uh, projection to a future a little bit, uh, the four major economies, they, uh, they commit emission uh, neutrality uh, to at the mid of the century to some extent. EU, US, they commit to the net zero emission by 50, 90, 2050, China 2060, India 2070. But uh, without a very uh, sophisticated uh, projection models, but just uh, looking at more like what they will do in the future and it's more linear, uh, uh, like um, you know, scaling up, this is much of the emission space would be required by the four major economies. And then the, under the two degree C, uh, kind of um, uh, like a, a two degree C um, uh, uh, carbon space, there will be very small amounts of the uh, the carbon space left for other countries like for Vietnam, Estonia, Uganda, Zambia, etc. Um, so, um, so whether the question is whether there's enough uh, emission space for those countries, and the second is if it's not enough, and what shall we do? Um, the key issue for study those countries in uh, in detail is that uh, many of those countries' uh, basic data uh, and especially emission accounting data and also uh, trade, social economic and uh, uh, input output data are not uh, uh, very much available. So this is a come to this um, 
um, kind of um, uh, the, the why we trying to uh, build a multi uh, regional input output model for those uh, with a special focus on that. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so one of the, the key reasons is that for some of the like uh, Cambodia, um, the Vietnam, their data are just uh, not uh, available, and the input output tables uh, in most of the uh, the the, uh, uh, the the data sets uh, they are not up to state, up to date. So usually about five to seven or sometimes five to ten years uh, delay uh, to study the current economy is not able to capture the current um, the status uh, for what we 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 trying to do here it's a, a, a sort of a review for um, the major uh, MRO databases uh, in the world uh, I'm, uh, it's not exclusive, um, but it's a major ones, including uh, GTAB, IORA, WLD, and also Asian Development Bank, and uh, several others, Exobase, etc. And uh, the uh, some um, uh, recent development like uh, Gloria, uh, etc. So um, they all have a different um, uh, uh, emphasis uh, in terms of um, uh, the uh, the, uh, the details of the countries or sectors and details of the special focus on what countries. I'm listing a, a few kind of the the comparisons between uh, the disaggregation levels, uh, country level, and timelines, etc and some of the uh, key um, uh, kind of shortcomings of each of the uh, the database uh, we, we hear um, and then build upon uh, on this and we trying to not solve all the problems and not uh, basically saying uh, we 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 are uh, we trying to build something uh, uh, brand new as it's uh, like um, uh, uh, like a uh, like a much more advanced on that but what we trying to do here is is trying to uh, use a philosophy of a modular compilation uh, framework and then to um, based on international trade data, bilateral trade data, uh, because the trade data, they are uh, almost up to date. You already have a one maximum two years delay, uh, like a, a delay time. Then we rely on the bilateral trade data uh, and then and, um, to construct the MRO uh, database and then to update the MRO uh, database uh, on an annual basis. Uh, this is our aim. And uh, another thing, another uh, good thing to rely on the trade data. So we should, we could have a very comparatively more uh, disaggregated sectors and uh, than the than the normal ones. And then so so this is what we trying to do here. And uh, the 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 entire emerging model, they have 135 sectors by 245 economies. This uh, including every single um, uh, economies with the trading uh, uh, activities in the world. It's not saying there has 245 countries. I think this is roughly about 198 countries plus some of the uh, islands and then some other like regions as well. Um, so they, if they are single economy with the trade activities, with customs, and then we count as a single economy. So this is um, uh, this is what we uh, we have done uh, this, and this is what we're trying to uh, explain here. So 135 sectors, uh, as far as we know, is most um, uh, disaggregated uh, in in terms of the um, uh, the uh, unified uh, uniformed uh, kind of uh, uh, sectors. And then the country level is the the uh, the, the the most um, uh, uh, kind of uh, widely uh, covered. A, uh, the most important is cover single uh, every single uh, developing economies uh, and some of the countries that we usually don't um, don't hear much uh, like Laos, Cambodia, etc. And uh, we are trying to do for um, uh, every year. And uh, right now we. Uh, we done for two uh, kind of um, uh, for the year of 2010 uh, for the period of uh, 2015 to 2019. Uh, we we are working on the 20, uh, 2020 to 2021 right now. So um, so this is the 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 kind of uh, the the, uh, the the format of the emerging model. 
And this is in more details. Uh, so what's the 400, 245 economy include? Um, you know, including um, every single uh, country, as I said, uh, 53 Asian countries, sorry about spelling, um, and the 48 European countries. Most important, we pay special focus on the emerging economies uh, like uh, Africa and, and South American countries and, um, and the Oceania. Antarctica, Antarctica we uh we don't we include the region but it doesn't have a a a, a trade uh, like much of trade activities so we don't really talking about this so um i i expect no questions about Antarc antarctica <laughs> there in the in the in the in the in the q a sessions <clears throat> uh 135 uh sectors uh including roughly about 20 something 28 26 of the agriculture sectors and uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, manufacturing sectors and uh, then we have a 35 uh, services sectors as well uh, you compared to many uh, existing uh, mrio databases the services sectors are much uh, higher uh, like a disaggregation level um the uh, where we get the the the, the, the what's what's the main data source um uh, to to have a my mro table is always a very complicated a very large scale data compilation um uh, project and uh, so um so the, the the first of all the one for the, the the kind of the benchmark database we using is un com trade da uh, trade data and we we don't do any compromise comp compromisations for for the trade data so they they are we believe although uh, we do know uh, the trade data. They they are not perfect, and they are not uh, like say a hundred percent accurate. But compared to many other uh, like uh, macroeconomic data, especially for many other countries, the trade data are more comparatively more accurate um, than many other uh, sort of the data we 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 have. Um, so so we 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 have the trade data as a as a baseline benchmark. And then we 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 uh, uh, get the construct the the MRO uh, uh, lot uh, lots of the rely on the the the, the trade data. Of course, we have a national uh, statistics. Uh, there's about um, uh, uh, IO data. We could be able to secure uh, 90 countries of the IO uh, tables uh, for different countries. And uh, then we, uh, for those countries doesn't have um, IO data, uh, then we we look for the second basis uh, where it is uh, regional organizations. For example, ADB, uh, like uh, Asian Development Bank, they also publish national um, uh, IO tables. Uh, then they have 11. OECD, of course, is 19. As uh, uh, the, the the data accuracy is much higher, uh, is 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 also very good. So. Um, uh, so we're trying to secure the national I.O. table uh, uh, as much as we can, but if you can't, then, then basically the I.O. data is very important to give you the A matrix, to give you the the, the production, many other uh, kind of uh, uh, features to construct the MRO. And then and if not, then we're trying to secure the I.O. Uh, tables or the regional tables from the regional um, uh, statistical uh, bodies. Um, then if we don't have those, especially many of the uh, African countries or, or other countries, um, they don't have uh, like uh, or don't construct the IO table themselves, then uh, they should have a sectorial. We're trying to secure their sectorial uh, GDP data. And uh, then uh, that would uh, serve as some sort of um, uh, 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 like provide the the basic information for for uh, estimation for their uh, for their uh, like uh, economic production structures etc. So apart from uh, from those, um, um, then uh, we have um, uh, yeah they got to the other way around as well. Uh, we got a FAO, FAO data for agriculture output. So we got the energy uh, product data from uh, input uh, 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 international energy agencies and um, and uh, some of our other countries, um, uh, other institutions to get a sectorial output and uh, value added, etc. 
then um, this is the um, um, so the the data is there. So this is the um, the 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 overall sort of um, uh, uh, structure for the emerging model. Um, so we built um, uh, as a module basis. Uh, there's a, a kind of a nine different uh, uh, modules uh, together, like a large modules together. And then uh, we, uh, for each different uh, like uh, uh, con uh, part, now we modulize them as well. Uh, so that's we, we actually could be able to uh, to uh, update, change, or correct the data or calibrate uh, the the data, uh, uh, especially uh, so for those countries who doesn't really have a data, and then uh, their uh, their uh, parameters what we assumed or what we estimated, we could replace the ones that become available, and then they will give us an opportunity to do that. Um, so uh, it's a um, um, including the, there's a several kind of um, advantages of the emerging model. First of all, it's a global scale, including every single economy is there, and uh, we're trying to capture enough details uh, in terms of the the structure changes, the supply chains. If we're trying to use that, including every single every uh, corner of the economy or the global supply chain reach. Um, then we're trying to do annual updated, so we could start from 2010 up to 2019 right now. And uh, then the, the finally, it's, it's a usually modularized uh, completion uh, kind of method uh, to, uh, for, for updates and uh, for, for com uh, change or correction of the, those status. So that, uh, next, I will just uh, details explain that each of these nine uh, compartments, basically, what we have. The first is the uh, the data module. Um, so uh, a lot is uh, based on, um, as I said, the the trade data, the bilateral trade from the income trade is what we rely on the most. And then the macroeconomic data, then we basically, this is uh, uh, including um, uh, the all the data we 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 collect, and for the macroeconomic data, uh, for for example, for our comparisons or for our um, kind of um, um, uh, like a ba uh, benchmark to to cal uh, calibrate on, uh, for example, imports, uh, export of the GDP data from World Bank, sectorial GDP uh, data from UN, etc. So so this is a have a um, this is the key part of our data module. The second is uh, we actually build is a trade matrix builder. So uh, so we um, uh, uh, the some of the, uh, the 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 national economic data for developing economies, they are very limited. We uh, we actually um, need to uh, sometimes we we uh, we have the regional average and then, then we uh, for some of the Central African countries we have to est we have to uh, estimate their production structures and by using their total output and then the production efficiency will have to borrow from the nearby uh, neighbors or or the regional. Uh, average. Uh, that's what we 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 got to do. So uh, so and then some of them. If we really don't have any, or even some of the countries, we don't have their um their their national statistic, even the macroeconomic data. Uh, only have a GDP, and uh, it doesn't have the GDP structure. Then uh, then we will have to estimate one, uh, which is uh, we did uh, by using tr their trade um, uh, like uh, uh, structures to estimate their macroeconomic structures. Uh, okay. There's um, a justification for that is uh, uh, many of those countries, uh, their economy very much a single economy, and um, they they uh, you know they they only have a one or two uh, uh, key sectors to do that, and usually they are very 
much re uh, rely on uh, trading activities to to keep their uh, society running. So um, so uh, the, by using the trade uh, structures to estimate their the economic structure can be uh, reasonable. Um, of course, this is not uh, accurate. And uh, once this uh, data become available, we would be able to update it by using the mod modular kind of uh, uh, um, like, uh, way to, to do that. The third is the reconciliation module. So, so basically, it's a calibration uh, procedure. So, once we built the uh, the uh, every single country's uh, um, the, the key mean Z matrix, basically this uh, 3D one. So, so 135 times 135 times um, um, uh, sorry, 245 times 245 times 135. Uh, so, this is the uh, matrix we have. Once we 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 build that. We're trying to um, uh, uh, match against the uh, the uh, global uh, macroeconomic database, trying to to uh, to 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 do the calibration uh, process, um, and that would include uh, we're trying to uh, uh, do this uh, GDP uh, against the World Bank GDPs, and they're they're trading uh, also their World Bank uh, trading uh, activities as well. And uh, then uh, we're trying to uh, use the Afri African development banks to to do the many African countries' uh, 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 social uh, uh, sectorial GDP uh, or the value added data, and for IEAs and then uh, FAO etc. to from the sectorial level for each individual economies if they have. Um, the next, um, uh, the uh, the uh, the module is what we call a disaggregation module. Uh, all this, um, um, the bilateral trade data. Some of the countries they are uh, they 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 have a more, and some countries they have less. And especially on uh, central input output uh, key uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 matrix. Uh, uh, their A matrix for national A matrix is not uh, um, 135 as a as self, and equally in many of the countries they are not. So we need to either aggregate or disaggregate. But for for those um, uh, countries, for many African or South Asian countries, uh, are largely a disaggregation um, a disaggregation uh, process. Um, so uh, so. We we um, most of the African countries they have about 20, 30 uh, sectors, uh, and the South Asian says similarly, and we have to aggregate them, disaggregate them, 135. So that's give us uh, quite a bit challenging uh, to do that again. Uh, who those economy doesn't have a complete IO data. We use weighted average sum for the available IoT compiled corresponding. Um, to to get this um, uh, input output table the, the matrix, and um, also we uh, uh, the uh, we also uh, uh, make a use of a, lo a lot on the trade uh, data because uh, the trade data they can go to four digits uh, and sometimes you can go uh, even further to get the detailed data. And then, 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 then those structures we have to split uh, sectors by using trade, uh, trade data to give uh, the disaggregation level of 135 as we require down here. The final uh, bottom three is a uh, transformation, the linkage. Um, uh, uh, you know, some of the the because uh, the each different country they compile the input output uh, 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 kind of the data are um, differently. Some of them they just have a supply use table, and some of the countries they just have a supply table. And uh, then some of country they compile the 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 com uh, non -com uh, competitive. Some of they are competitive, so we have to all translate it into a one uh, to a to a non competitive uh, IO uh, 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 table to make uh, the usage of uh, uh, MRIO. Uh, the finally. Um, it's uh, the the validation, uh, which we I will talk uh, quite a lot uh, later on about uh, the comparison with other models and comparison with uh, uh, the key national statistics. So um, 
the um, the 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 first uh, the validation. Uh, we make uh, the emerge uh, compared to f four major uh, uh, global MRIO uh, in the world, including Expo, Expo Base and uh, OECD, uh, Iora, and uh, GTAB. Um, and uh, so this is a global total, basically. So uh, if we we look at the 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 value added, uh, global uh, value added, and uh, for all the uh, well selective the sectors and with uh, some uh, aggregations uh, levels on because we're trying to make a comparison to among the five uh, uh, models there. Uh, so uh, so the, all the models are, are not uh, entirely the same. Some countries, some some models, uh, their results are, are higher in certain sectors and some of them are in lower sectors. So overall, I think I've, overall the global um, GDP, they are all almost identical to each other, but on the sectorial level, they they are uh, different. Um, and then uh, emerging model compared to most of well, this, all the four, uh, they are zero to, I mean, about uh, up to 15% of the differences compared to the four or uh, different models. And then this is on the sectorial levels. And then this is a, uh, uh, in the we we actually to look at the key um, like a, um, uh, like a like a uh, driving sector economic driving sectors such as constructions. If you look at the constructions between uh, emerge uh, emerging models and the GTAP and others, they are slightly different in terms of global totals. Um, the they are between eight to thirty percent differences. Is uh, especially with the expo base is um is quite uh, uh quite quite large. And in terms of construction uh, uh, value added, emerging is among the smallest uh, uh compared to the GTAP uh, or the OECD or IOR. So uh, so it's um it's this is the the sort of a comparison between the the uh, the global uh, sectors. And if we look at the countries and trying to against, oh sorry, I should okay. Um, there's a the uh, um, the, uh, the 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 leak table has been so we actually uh, compare uh, the uh, the emerging output with the World Bank uh, data in terms of their GDPs and then import and export. Uh, mostly GDP is almost identical because we're using uh, the uh, GDP as a benchmark uh, to to for each countries as well. So the import and uh, export, uh, we are using com UN Common Trade, and I do believe uh, um, World Bank, they do also use uh, sort of uh, UN Common Trade data, of course, with some adjust adjustments there too. So the trading data are slightly different, but largely identical. And uh, we compare the uh, the this is the uh, illustration of the small economy, like the emerging economies. Uh, the emerging economy doesn't include China because we the first thing to construct the I/O input output is to trying to stabilize the U.S., EU, China, India, the large economies. Um, but uh, uh, we didn't do much of the balance RAS balancing here because uh, once we do the RAS balancing, we tried many times. So if we do RAS balancing, it's easier uh, for us to get a balance table. However, they will seriously twist uh, the small countries um, uh, data because they are very vulnerable. Um, their economy, very small loss is very small. They are like 0.5 or even 0.3% of a global economy or even less. And um, and uh, the, um, if we twist, uh, you know, using RAS, uh, a little change in the globally will have a ser serious consequences to a loss as well. So um, so for the entire completion um, process, we only have very limited um, uh, the uh, the uh, the process. We use RAS to to do the things, but mostly it's a, com a completion and balance uh, balancing um, as its own. 
And uh, this is a illustration uh, for like Myanmar, Laos, uh, Malaysia, Estonia. So those uh, those uh, uh, kind of uh, newly emerging economies or newly emerging emitters, and uh, their 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 data, uh, uh, how their data shows, and uh, how their their data compared to the World Bank's uh, almost like a real time, real real life uh, statistics. Oh, this uh, I think this country. Let me skip this. is quite difficult to explain. Uh, um, also, um, we compare the um, the uh, by using selective of the 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 countries to make a comparisons uh, um, uh, between different uh, input output models. And this is um, uh, the on the on the left hand side is a production uh, domestic production structures on the right hand side is consumption based uh, value added um, so all our final uh, final uh, demand um, so um, so trying to look at this and then this give you the comparison by sec sectors so all the different uh, colors are the sectors uh, in this um, in different um, in the four uh, different models um, this give you a, a kind of a direct comparison about a uh, uh, small country like Vietnam uh, Bulgaria and uh, well, I can't say uh, Brazil a small country but some major economy uh, like uh, emerging economies um, uh, the, the, how they they are uh, uh, the, the comparisons for each of the, the countries has uh, certainly uh, there's uh, many countries like Togo, Congo, some of the countries uh, emerging model does have, but uh, um, many of uh, most of the other other modules, uh, other the uh, MRO model doesn't contains. So this is just uh, the the uh, the comparison by by sectorials. The countries uh, um, uh, behave slightly different uh, among this, uh, but uh, this is the um, the this is the the right reality of different uh, uh, MRO models. So I'll say the uncertainties uh, among the all uh, input output models. Um, so this is the about the 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 overall quick review about the 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 how we construct and then the how they we uh, compare with the other MRO models and the real data. And next, so I want to talk because we also published the environment count, mainly the carbon dioxide emission account for emerging economies like globally developing economies. Um, so we uh, um, so just a slightly uh, a few minutes uh, fr away from the MRO, um, we constructed the CO two emission inventories for the, the global emerging economies. Um, uh, we have done for fifty of them, and uh, um, those countries are partially co covered by IEA, but um, a lot of the the data uh, is uh, firstly uh, we we compiled uh, by ourselves. Um, so um, this oh sorry this is a Chinese so oops oh somehow I'm I'm sorry I I had a. English version, but somehow I put a Chinese version here. Um, so this is the global map. So you can see this most is in Africa, in in um, in, East, in South Asia, in Latin American countries, and uh, we compile the emission database for uh, those countries, so global emerging economies. Uh, we try. We also trying to do this. Um, uh, to break, for example, for for India, uh, we 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 have a break India into 33 federal states. Uh, for Russia, it's uh, 83 uh, states as well. Uh, for Brazil, Argentina, Bolivia, etc., we also be able to break them down into uh, states level, uh, like the provincial level. And uh, now it's um, uh, from last year we published a 30. Emerging economies as as, as CO2 emission inventories, and and uh, then uh, this year we published uh, 50, and you can see uh, China there is a is a is a it's a, it's, a, it's a blank. It's not saying we don't publish Chinese data. We have a separate uh, on on China, but uh, but for this particular uh, report or the research is a uh, focus on uh, global emerging uh, economies, uh, mainly for South Asia and uh, and Africa and the Latin American countries, where their data uh, CO two emission uh, inventories are not um, uh, largely available. 
So, uh, so why we focus on them? Uh, as I said in the future, uh, first, and you know, over the and uh, all these uh, red uh, circled uh, areas, uh, their emissions uh, in the past uh, ten years or so has uh, uh, achieved over five percent. And many countries like uh, uh, Myanmar, their emission growth is about uh, uh, on every day, on every year basis, annual basis, about about seventeen percent. And where, uh, uh, versus their GDP only increased about seven percent or six percent per year, and uh, Zambia and uh, their emission uh, growth is about uh, even on average basis about fifteen uh, percent as well, and uh, those countries their emission grow really fast, and uh, yeah, so but however, there doesn't have a, a sufficient uh, kind of a, a statistics for emission inventories. That's why we 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 do that. Uh, this year, we we actually published our uh, launched our uh, reports, and now it's uh, freely available on the SEAS website, uh, both English and the Chinese version. Uh, and then uh, we 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 launched this is on the uh, uh, COP27 in Egypt in in Shanashek, uh, last week, and uh, then um, then uh, we we uh, we dis also discussed the, uh, the the way forward for this uh, the developing economies as well. So next step is uh, the ongoing research. We combine this uh, environment account, like so the emission account, uh, with the uh, the emerging model. We we do that, and then tr firstly trying to calculate some of the emission uh, consumption based emission um, data, and this by using the the um, for the emerging model, we have uh, been able to. Um, uh, compile the MRO or the input output uh, data database for every single African economies. However, for the uh, the em emission accounts, we we don't. We only cover this much of the African uh, countries in the in the in, in there. So we are uh, in the like uh, by using our own compiled emission data. Uh, with the environment, uh, with, with the MRIO we built to 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 make our environment extended MRIO. So the, to do the consumption based emission in 2019 on the left hand side is a 2019 as a consumption based emission for those countries, and certainly Africa, uh, Algeria, Egypt are the uh, the largest or uh, Nigeria as well. Uh, um, they, they are the largest in terms of consumption based emission. On the right hand side is a, is a, is a change. So it's a, it's a change in the consumption based emission uh, in the last five years or so. And uh, although the South Africa is a very um, large uh, kind of uh, in terms of uh, consumption emissions, but over the five years of time, they are actually reduced a little bit. Uh, but increasingly, uh, Nigeria are the largest uh, increase uh, happened, and followed by uh, uh, Kenya, uh, Ghana, etc. Um, this is a more uh, kind of a, um, a, a sort of a, a comparisons between the production base and the consumption base among the, the countries we we show there, South Africa. Morocco, Nigeria, etc., and uh, their uh, their carbon emissions from production base uh, versus consumption base, and uh, their per capita emissions and their carbon intensity overall. Um, so I'm just uh, I'm not uh, uh, today is mainly talk about the 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 the. Um, the the model, uh, but uh, the, the some sort of uh, uh, the examples we we have uh, on the pipeline is trying to uh, to use this model to to do the um, uh, the analysis for those uh, major uh, uh, to to the to the emerging economies. Uh, then let's switch to South Africa. Uh, sorry, South America. And this is a, a handful of countries in South Af America. Of course, we we actually have every single, uh, not every single, but uh, eighty percent of the uh, the 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 countries in both in South Africa, America, um, in in terms of emission data and as well as uh, input output data. And this is just a selection of them. Um, uh, by looking at Argentina, 
and then this is a, a structure decomposition analysis um, and looking at from 2015 to 2019, uh, we could see a significant emission drop um, uh, by uh, from Argentina, the top A, uh, the first one is Argentina, uh, the top left, uh, it's, it's uh, Argentina. Uh, but this is largely driven by GDP per capita consumption, basically um, per capita GDP losses over the last uh, few years or so. Um, uh, similarly, um, the um, uh, Brazil, uh, they have a increase. They from 2015 to 2019, ov overall emission is going down, but it has a really going down uh, in the 20s uh, from the first two years and going up back a little bit. And in 2019, uh, again, it's largely driven by GDP drop or uh, up and down. Uh, this so the Brazil and Argentina. What we trying to what we trying to say here is that. Uh, um, although their emissions um, are declining, but they are not uh, what we call the decoupling uh, um, kind of uh, uh, decarbonization. Of course, Brazil is already quite clean, but this is largely driven by 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 the uh, by the GDP. And so, it's a, a GDP is a major driver, or per capita GDP is a major driver, or per capita consumption is a major driver uh, for their emissions, uh, uh, you know, up and down. And if you look at the uh, the, the the top uh, right, the two figures there, uh, and the uh, the uh, Chile and then Bolivia, uh, their emissions are, are very much uh, driven driven by their economic uh, the energy structures. So what sort of the fuel they they are using? Um, this is what they they do. So there's that major drivers on here. So you, within the Latin American countries. Most of the countries, they are um, like uh, not like uh, carbon intensive in that way. Uh, however, um, uh, you know, there's a, uh, energy structure and GDP are the two major uh, dr driving forces uh, in terms of their their consumption based emissions. Um, f future applications is uh, something we we have have done some and uh, haven't uh, finished. Is trying to look at the embodied emission trade. That's a, a, a kind of um, um, a, a classical uh, the MRIO can do. And then the uh, the we also are working on the labor and then and then the especially just transitions for many of the South Asian countries and also China and then the, what's the uh, the traditional sectors if they they um, um, kind of uh, uh, disappeared or uh, what would be the labor uh, footprint uh, would they would have uh, on those uh, different sectors uh, transition between different sectors and one of the uh, the studies is undergoing is look at the decent livings by different world regions and by using um, the, um, the the emerging models we have. Uh, again, and there's other uh, applications we could uh, we could uh, do. For example, uh, a disaster footprint analysis where we have a, a, a carried uh, or, or, or work on uh, quite intensively over the last uh, 10 years uh, to look at the global heat stress or the global flooding. Uh, what will be the consequences uh, to uh, very vulnerable places, and ma majority in Africa and South Asia? And uh, then uh, what will be the consequences on what will be the cascading effects along the uh, upstream and downstream supply chains, similarly to other emerging economy environmental issues. Um, so I think that's um, I might uh, over quite uh, over a bit. And uh, this is my um, my talk. And uh, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, uh, looking forward to to discussion and possibly. Thank you, Anabla. Yeah. Uh... That's a great presentation. You know, it's a uh, very comprehensive database. Um, so now we get to the Q and A session. Okay, so this session is not going to be recorded.